Situated in the southern region of Africa, Malawi, which is deemed as the warm heart of Africa, is a landlocked country blessed with a lot of natural resources that gives great development potential and has a lot of places for tourist attraction. Despite this fortune, 15 years post-independence, Malawi is still categorized among the poorest countries in the world. Perhaps it is time to assess government's policies and strategies that have been guiding the government's operations. Malawi's vision is to be a middle-income country by the year 2020. Five years to 2020, Malawi is still at a crossroad and needs to be transformed to become a better country. Malawians are therefore being called to action to make a choice to realize this vision. As it has always been his agenda, His Excellency Professor Arthur Peter Mtariga promised the nation ahead of the May 20 tripartite elections that he will reform the public service to enhance economic development. May 21st, chairman to reform the government in this country. First of all, Boma the too much power. President, I need power than the too much power. This is some power's manager. If you go here, put in my position in the bank governor, I got general Wamakra, our MBC, anti corruption group, the auditor general, uh, accountant general, I our budget, as this country and the committee of parliament. Give me all such a present here. As I count up the parliament, or Marshall got side back and children, as I just said in the committee, or such a present. Give me more, yes. Evidence to his overwhelming victory, Malawians felt indeed the time had come for public service reforms. Most of the public service institutions are corrupt with lack of proper customer service, provision of standard services in an untimely manner as well as lack of professionalism. But the hope of the nation is laid in a visionary leader who saw the importance of bringing positive change into the public service. I will well and truly perform. I will well and truly perform. This spirit that His Excellency Professor Arthur Peter Mtarika appointed a public service reform commission chaired by the Vice President, the Right Honorable Saulos Chirima. The other members of the commission are Professor Mwanza, Mr. Thompson Mpinganjira, Ms. Evelyn Mapasa, Reverend Howard Matiankoma, Ms. Seod White, Mr. Bright Mangulama, and Mr. Krishna Savijan. The aim of the Public Service Reform Commission is to facilitate the creation of an effective and efficient public service that will spur economic growth through the nurturing of a market economy that is foreign direct investor friendly, as well as one that will facilitate long-term investment in health, education, and other social programs. The Commission recognizes that a transformed public service spurs economic growth and creates more jobs and businesses for Malawians. Uh, for, for everything to forge ahead, uh, we, we need the leadership uh, to show us the way. Now the President has confirmed, he has shown his commitment uh, you know, to, to reform uh, and is fully supportive of uh, the activities that the Reforms Commission is undertaking, including some of the things that we're going to be undertaking uh, in the near future. Now, you see why I'm saying we need to rally everybody behind. We need to first of all civic educate, uh, help everybody understand the importance of these things. It's, that's why I'm saying it's not just about the public service. Perhaps we need to extend it a little bit more. There are a lot of recommendations that the Commission has come up with in order to have a reformed public service. An action plan has been implemented to oversee the reformation process. As it is being launched by His Excellency Professor Arthur Mutarika at the Bingo International Conference Center in Ilong, the nation expects a lot of positive changes as regards to service offered by the public institutions. I should say that I'm happy that as a government we have walked the talk in our promise to reform the civil service so that we stop this business as usual approach that was heavily infested in our civil service. Now, as we are launching the reforms, my appeal to all Malayans is that we should all embrace the reforms and change our attitude and mindset towards the public service. My fellow Malayans, if we embrace and support the reforms, we'll be doing a great service to the people of this country. 
The Public Service Reform recommends that managers in different departments and ministries must take their position seriously and ensure that their juniors are performing to the state standards. According to the commissioners, another way of ensuring a permanent positive progress in the public service delivery is by reforming the constitution of Malawi, which seems to have loopholes as far as public service management is concerned. With regards to rights and obligations, and in particular obligations of civil servants in regard to their work in the public service, we have recommended institutionalization of performance management. This means sanctioning those who don't perform effectively as well as rewarding those who perform. In this regard, we've also looked at organizational performance systems, meaning ministries, departments and agencies will be required to come up with goals and outcomes on their performance. For example, there will be a performance management contract that will be signed between the head of state and the ministers. The ministers and the PSs, the PSs and directors, and so on and so forth. This is all in an effort to create a more effective and vibrant civil service. One of the major reasons that hinder the successful operation of the public service is direct government interference. No country can function without an efficient, professional public service. Since 1994, we've had the introduced into our system appointment by patronage. This has resulted in the appointment of incompetent or unqualified people in some positions, despite the fact that the majority of the public servants are very able, very competent and highly qualified. But the introduction of the political element in appointments has demotivated the public service, has resulted, compromised the performance and has undermined the authority of the leadership of the public service. The President has given a clear lead about the need for change on this front and he has agreed to trim his powers with the result that the new civil service that will have only PSs appointed by the President after a thorough screening by the public service itself and any public servants below the rank of PS will be appointed by the public service system itself and not by the president as happens now. The commission recommends that most government institutions should be run and managed by independent people who will be able to make independent, objective decisions, not favoring government of the day. As you are aware, in Malawi and in most countries, government is the biggest provider of services, but also the one that provides an enabling environment. One of the reasons why the private sector in Malawi has not done very well is because of government inefficiency and underperformance. As you can see, when the courts don't function, when the government you know, goes on a shutdown, nothing happens in the private sector. Parliament goes on shutdown, nothing, no bills can be passed. So we want to make sure that the government functions. Because when it functions, then government will concentrate on making sure that the environment is perfect for the private sector. Decline in the public service, uh, of discipline in the public service, because we believe that there has been political influence in the decision-making process in the public service, in the appointments of various personnel in the public service, and therefore we have also brought in people who normally would not have performed to that level if they were not recruited into the public service. One of the reasons why the teachers have problems is that um, they, they are treated um, rather in, in a very inferior manner because um, let's take the issue of salaries, for example, for the rural primary school and secondary school teachers. We hear about every day that the teachers have not received the salaries. Now this is um, something that is denigrating. And um, the reform, for example, has taken note of this in, and it has recommended that you know, the payment of salaries for teachers should not be done just from the capital hill for the whole country. It's failing. So we, we, the commissioners have recommended that you know, it should be decentralized to the region. As a matter of fact, as I'm speaking now, the payment of salaries has already been decentralized to the regions. And very soon, it will be decentralized to the district so that the teachers are getting their salaries in time. 
We need to bring back respect for the teachers. And if teachers are not paid, you can imagine that this kind of respect will not be there. This plane was uh, understood to be very seriously lacking in the Public Service Commission. A number of staff can behave as they want and they are never sanctioned. We learned this from officers in the ministries and the different people expressed it. So we did emphasize to say ethics must be strictly observed. People must be disciplined in doing their work. They must be disciplined in handling issues relating to the government or performance. So we realized and understood that several leaders or officers were not able to sanction their juniors on account of different uh, factors. So these have been looked into and it is highly recommended that staff that don't staff who do not perform well, who do not behave well, who do not handle government issues as well as property in the way they should, those should be sanctioned. So it's not just a matter of discipline uh, being the only factor that needs to be attended to, but it must be strictly adhered to and it must be implemented. So this will be done. The Commission is aware that cash care is a big issue whereby taxpayers as well as other financiers of government lost confidence in the public financial management system. So as part of these reforms, you'll be pleased to know that uh, one of the pioneer ministries, actually ministry number one is the Minister of Finance. Minister of Finance will be reforming for two reasons. One, uh, if we don't regain the confidence of the taxpayers and other financiers, it will be difficult to raise the money that we need for development. The other reason is the Ministry of Finance has to reform and it has to perform to facilitate the reforms in the other ministries. For example, Ministry of Education. If Ministry of Finance does not reform, it will be difficult to pay salaries. It will be difficult to get the teachers in the classrooms. So Ministry of Finance is a key area. Uh, it will have to be reformed and we believe cash gate issues are being dealt with. The public service agenda is a hope for the development of Malawi. This is why His Excellency Professor Arthur Peter Mtarika is calling on every Malawian to be part of this agenda to create a future we all dream of.